You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Johnson. After Buzz TV. After Buzz TV. From the AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's Believe After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show, it's AfterBuzz TV's Believe After Show. There's two things I know oh. for sure. <laughs> Song's totally sci-fi. <laughs> totally fits. Totally fits. All right. Welcome, welcome to another episode of After Buzz After Show Believe. We are now talking about episode six in our premiere season. Uh, our episode is called Sinking, and it's pretty, I think well titled as most tv shows are mm -hmm. i am your host courtney henderson and joining me are my lovely co-hosts what's up guys i'm bobby demuro hi guys i'm kate aquilano all right well let's just dig right in the episode opens with the flashback yeah first of all i just gotta say i was really excited about this episode because we don't know that much about tate so going in i was really excited and it didn't let me down we learned a little bit more about his background. A lot. A I lot more about his right? background. Yeah, I was happy. I liked so, it. I still want to see more about Tate and Bo's mom. Ooh, maybe that, that's That's got to come later, but. But. Yeah. So we have the flashback. Mm -hmm. Eight years ago, mm -hmm. uh, while he may not have been a murderer, he was kind of a rough guy, right? He was, he was not a good person. He was going down that road. If he wasn't going to be there already, he was maybe going to get there I don't anyways. know if he was ever going to go to murderer status, but he was, let's say, in the wrong crowd. Oh, for sure. Definitely. Definitely well, in the wrong crowd. And, you know, the whole episode takes place in his hometown, mm -hmm. and so we kind of see there's not really anything else to do but get into trouble. In <laughs> yeah, <this> basically. <laughs> Amazing. So he goes back, of course. We, you know, we know from last week's episode that we have Bo, who kind of set him free because she knew he needed to go kind of handle this business. So it's cool that we get to see all this business. He, he just wants to go. It looks like get revenge and kind of clear his name. He goes home. Dad isn't very welcoming. What do we think about that? I mean, dad I, like pretty much thinks he did it. Well, I, I, look, the dad wasn't welcoming. He walks into the home, or maybe correctly breaks into the home. Kinda. The True. dad pulls a shotgun on him that doesn't have <laughs> any shells in it. So but he knew that. He knew there were yeah, no shells. Exactly. In there. So the dad didn't want to kill him, but I think the dad maybe just wants to defend himself, and I think that established the relationship that they have, which is not good. Not good True. at all. I don't think that he necessarily believes he did it. But he just, you know, he's kind of given, it's a lost cause. Like, there's nothing that's going to help this situation. So why are you back here? You're just going to make it worse. And, and a big thing in that town, too, not just with the dad, but with all of Tate's friends, it's a pride issue. Mm -hmm. And everybody, when he came back, they said, we took a hit. Our town took a hit. We don't want to see you, whatever it is. And even though Tate may not have murdered people, he made the town look bad. Yeah, he it's just bringing everything back up. Even though his intentions are good, everyone else surrounding him, yeah, they've moved on, but it hasn't affected them as it has Tate. He's been in a jail cell for eight years and almost yeah, easy, died. Easy for them to say they yeah. weren't the ones on death row. Exactly. Rough. Moved on to the next uh, job and the next like shady deal is what they moved on to because we see that his best friend mm -hmm. was the one that turned him in. I mean, they kind of betrayed him. So it looks like Billy and what was his name? Patty. Patty. Mm -hmm. Which I'm like, is his name Patrick? And they like they all have these like boy girl names. Like totally Jack Irish. and Jackie. I was Billy. Like very Irish. Very Irish. Yeah. Bad so, boy like Patty from down the street. <laughs> yeah. We've got Patty, we've got Jackie, we've got Billy. Billy. <laughs> I wonder when Seamus is gonna make an uh, appearance. Yeah. Um, well, we have so so they go to do this quick in and out job that I guess Jack got them, it looks like. Yeah. Everybody knows that it's not just really a quick job. It's a total setup. I think except for Billy and Patty. I think yeah. I don't think Patty was in on it. I think he got scared after the fact. Right. When they come out, there's two dead bodies. The fingerprints are everywhere. There's kind of no way out of this. They and have no idea what to do. They're both going down, and he's sort of like, well, if I turn my back, then only one of us has to go down. Well, doesn't this establish to Tate's 
even though he's a bad guy, he's a good guy. Because Tate, in the flashback eight years earlier, said to Bill, said to um, said to Patty, "We have to have each other's back. I'll have your back. You have mine. We right. keep our story together." And then they get separated, and Patty flips on him. But Tate wasn't ready to flip. So it establishes that even though Tate is a criminal, he's a good guy. He's at heart, he, he still has his friends. <laughs> exactly, he still has his friends. He still has, treats his friends like family and whatever. And yeah. that just establishes that no matter what he did, mm -hmm. he's going to treat Bo the same way. He'll treat Winter the same way, no matter where their relationship goes. True. Good. True. Right. I, like I like that. Yeah, me too. Me too. So, of course, if he goes to his hometown, Winter and Channing and Bo are quick to follow. Which I wasn't expecting from the promo. I was expecting, like, maybe a last-minute save from Bo. I thought he was going to go handle his stuff, and they weren't really going to be involved. And I like how they, you know, she just kind of follows him. And, of course, she knows where she, he is. Well, I mean, and... I mean, we, it's kind of one of those things where we know him being such a main character in the show. They're going to have the episode kind of be about all of them. Mm -hmm. And, if, you know, I like how they intertwine the stories. So it it wasn't just sort of like an evading episode again. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, I mean, it is, but it isn't. It's it's not evading the same people. Or right. the show's pretty separate and quiet in this episode uh, in comparison. Yeah. And and I like, I like seeing them all kind of in Tate's hometown. I loved getting to see Bo interact with her grandpa. I know. When they were fighting in the ring and he was oh like, my God. I was like, oh my God. I think it, oh, I wrote really cute. I, I was like, this is the first time she's really gotten to just kind of be a kid. Right. And and I love how it was her, of course, that gets them in the in the door at, at I will just call him grandpa, grandpa's house. Yes. <laughs> it's and, true. and, you know, then the cops come and want to know who he's seen is he gonna you know and they're all you know sitting on the other side of the room what did you i mean did you think he was gonna break and did he really fight winter or was that just kind of like a that was like no. him trying to act drunk like, and i'm not gonna give you anything yeah. i'm gonna be i, I think he was he, the whole time officer. he was real standoffish with yeah. the cops when he said he hasn't had a drink in years and he's holding you know drink. gin or whiskey and or whatever yeah. it was it's not even like you know behind the door you know exactly. like they, they show those kind yeah. of shots some no no it's like fully in his hand yeah. in front of the, it's like you want a sip cop? And, and i think and i think that also establishes in that town the way those people are even though they may have turned on each other even yeah. though they may not be the best people they don't turn each other into the cops they don't snitch they don't do any no of that one stuff. tells anyone and no matter the relationship that tate and his father have his father there's no way his father's going to turn him into the police no matter how bad it is he's not going to just turn him over yeah, to cops. right so well and it gets pretty freaking bad in that house because <laughs> <laughs> immediately right away yes it, i mean it Blows up. Well, not blows up, but I mean, it, it lights on fire. Lights on fire. Well, this is a continuity issue. I'm wondering because Why? the police left, yeah. and four seconds later, the firebomb came they in the window. They didn't see the like burst of flames or the people running out of the back. I kind of wondered about that too. At first, I was almost like, these are these are not the feds. Because I'm you know, <laughs> thinking it was like maybe them, and I mean, obviously not. We know that it was Jack yeah. and maybe Patty yeah. at that point because. You know, uh, Tate hadn't gone to visit him yet. Right. And I love how he he promises Bo that he's not going to hurt, hurt people. The and then they have a the whole conversation. I mean, and we see them throughout this episode. It's really funny because we were talking as we were watching it that, I mean, there are some moments in this episode where Bo and Tate act like brother and sister. Yeah. Like, neither one of them is, like, playing the parent. Because a lot of times I think Bo kind of is being the parent and oh, Tate's definitely. kind of the kid. And, but there was one point, point, and they're just going back and forth. I'm like, you guys are just playing like brother and sister. And well, because I don't know, I feel like <sighs> Tate doesn't, he doesn't know his role yet. And he's, he's the protector, but he could, I could see that like older brother kind of protection. And he doesn't know his, his, situation yet so maybe he'll step up in the future and be more of a parent and speaking from the male perspective on the show if i may ladies, sure. go ahead all of us gentlemen have the maturity of about 11 year olds <laughs> so tate fits right in yep, with that and him 10. and Bo can just go back and forth so it makes sense it's it's it I, I believe that part it works all right so let's go back to tate going and seeing first patty yeah and kind of roughing him up a bit well i mean he kind of had no information. Now, he played a lot dumber than it turns out he ended up being. He ended up having a, a lot more information. He may not have known why they showed up to do a quick job and mm -hmm. it turned out to be two dead bodies that they're getting framed for murder. Yeah. But, I mean, he obviously knows Jack had a lot more to do with it. 
that there's answers there that he could have given that he didn't. And, I mean, Tate kind of lets him off the hook because Bo and they show up. Well, I think that, you know, he, he went up to his place. He roughs him up a bit. His face is not looking too good. But Patty, you can tell that he wants to say something, and he gives just enough away that I think uh, Tate really, he believes him, and he, they go so far back that he doesn't want to believe he did it, and then Patty says, like, um, you know, there was more to the situation, like, I was being told to do things. So he's being very vague, but yet it tells Tate a lot of, it was a bigger situation, just the two of them. And do you think that he just felt like it wasn't his place to share the information, or that he actually doesn't have more than just, like, dude, I... I don't know how high up this goes, but it's bigger than yeah, me. And I, yeah. I was just like, I was just a pawn and I just did what I was told so that I didn't end up sinking. This little bad group of guys, they have this little hierarchy and Patty's not up there. And so he kind of just has to say what he's told to say and not say what he's told not to say. And I think he's trying to clue Tate in, but he has to kind of figure it out for himself. Well, and let's take this and look at the storyline and Winter's story and Bo's story because this robbery occurred eight years ago. Mm -hmm. Bo is 10. Winter has been working with Bo for 10 years because he said it in this episode, I've known this girl for, for the last yeah, 10 years. Yeah, her whole life. Um, and I know we haven't talked about this and this hasn't been in the show yet. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's coming, but was the CIA or Winter or one of these larger organizations involved in framing Tate also? Do you think it goes that high up? And when Bo turned two, they said, okay, we need her father at some point. Right. We need to get him in prison so eight years later we can break him out of prison. That's a long sell. I get it. I wouldn't, but the thing is, I wouldn't put it past Roman. But, yeah. I, you uh, know, like he needed, you know, he wants to have full control over Bo. And so taking the father out of the situation, you know, out of the equation, it could happen. And I could see that popping up later in the season. A hundred percent. I, when, when, she at the end of this episode said, you know, we, we need to hear Winter's story. Mm -hmm. I that's what I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be Winter having to come clean saying he was somehow... sorry, but we, you know, a guy for a guy for a guy found Jack, mm -hmm. who found you and Patty, yeah. and it was all part of the plan. You know, I, I I really thought that's what was coming. Yeah. I mean, I liked what we heard. I like, <laughs> that, I like that Tate now knows that Bo is his daughter. My favorite um, But that really was a story that I thought was going to come out, or at mm -hmm. least kind of imply that uh, in some way, right. kind of like to hook us for, for next week. But hey, it different could still hook. come. It, it, it's true. It, it could still absolutely come because yeah. it didn't address that either way. Yeah. yeah. So after he goes, backtracking a little bit, after he goes to see Patty, mm -hmm. who tells him, no, you got to talk to Jack. Yep. He goes to Jack in the bar, and he takes Bo with him. Why, why are you taking a kid to a bar to see kind of like the most dangerous well, man in town? Uh, well, two things. First off, Bo is his lie detector now. Because he oh, found out that's right. that she can tell when the people are telling the truth. And I think the second that's one totally is... That's totally why he took her. <laughs> yeah. But I think the second one, Tate. even if she wasn't a lie detector in that way, I think Tate does it for Bo, and he also does it for himself. When Bo is with him he's not going to beat up a guy right. or kill a guy. And so he's kind of protecting himself. He's protecting the situation. And no guy is going to attack him when it's just him and Bo. Even though these guys are small-time criminals and maybe right. not the most honorable. It's I don't a think, little girl. Exactly. I don't think anybody's going to attack somebody in front of a little girl. And I think that's sort of a protective buffer. He can find out what's going on. Then he drops off Bo and says, okay, now I'm going back. And it's on. <laughs> yeah. Well, and so he does that. He kind yeah. of gets just enough information. Mm -hmm. They go back to the old boxing ring, which I love that... <laughs> I love that whole little like side story with grandpa and love having him. been a boxer and mm -hmm. having the old boxing mm -hmm. gym or whatever it was and playing with Bo like you said. Yes. And one well, I love how I love the comment that he made about, you know, he used to hit me and he's like trained him better. <laughs> you know, because he taught him how to because he taught him how to fight. And so right. it's like as rough as their relationship is, oh, they, they definitely have some moments and they're just kind of, I mean, you tell me, they're kind of dudes about it. I think I think it's just a, a good example, maybe just a Hollywood example. I don't know if it's necessarily a real life example, but it's a good representation of a real working class father to son relationship where if you're really white collar or something, you see that and you'd be like, my dad wasn't like that. He was yeah. a businessman. But if your dad works in a factory or if your dad is a woodworker or something and you grew up working class, you might see that and say, God, you know, I learned to fight the same way and pops taught me the same way and I get it. 
So yeah. it's just it's a representation of where Tate came from, not just the small town, but kind of the rough and tough exactly. way totally. he had to be raised. Yeah, definitely. Totally. Well, and and I love I kind of I love that because then you know they, they go back to the gym and we see him and his dad kind of talking and his dad kind of like take the first step towards peace or you know just sort of like yeah he gets back in his uh, his corner basically i mean when he's uh when tate's at the bar with Bo, jack offers him fifty thousand dollars just kind of because just to take it hush money and yeah so then you figure Seriously. you know it's hush money even though it's not quite said that way and when he gets back to the gym tells the dad about what happened and the hush money you know it becomes obvious that it's jack and his father father obviously wants you know to have the person responsible you know have something done so he can you know have have ha, let tate have some closure yeah. yeah i think that's when his his tate's dad kind of begins to understand and, and a little bit side with Bo, maybe without realizing it that tate kind of needs this mm -hmm. to move on right for for the next thing and then we find out that he, he's not actually looking for revenge. He just wants truth and answers. He just wants to know why. Yeah. And, and again, that goes to the testament that we're kind of saying, like, he's really a good guy. Mm -hmm. He's, like, the good guy, bad guy. Like, he's a good guy because most people want to go really pop the guy that mm -hmm. put him in this situation and turned on him. He doesn't. He just wants truth. Truth leads to a little bit of a pickle, yeah. as they, <laughs> to put it lightly. Yeah, to put it mildly. <laughs> you know, and... He goes back to the bar, and I, I wonder if he kind of knew that there wouldn't be all of them, you know, because it's like, okay, they meet, and now it's sort of like, that's sort of like the standoff. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, they go back to their corners, and now they're coming in full force. I feel like he kind of knew that it wouldn't just be Jack in the bar when he went back. I think so, too. And, yeah. you know, so... But he still had to go. Oh, he had to. There, there, there was no other option. Right. So they go, they take him to, I guess, Jack's boat... Things get a little scary. Well, and on that boat is where you were talking about Tate wanting answers instead of revenge. He says on that boat, I don't remember it verbatim, yeah. but it's something along the lines of, I was locked up for eight years in my 20s. Yeah, I want to know why. Yeah, and he's like, you know, even walking to my death, it like never crossed his mind that it would have been Jack. So like, yeah. yes, it means something to him to find out who and why. Yeah. It's a good example. If you're going to be a criminal and you have honor, maybe you shouldn't commit crime. Maybe you shouldn't get with other criminals because other criminals don't have honor. <laughs> Those guys are backstabbing each other. Tate's got too much honor to be a criminal. He should go, you know, be in the military or do something. Yeah, yeah. well, and we see that because at the end we see Patty. Yeah. Just like you're saying, like, there is no loyalty. It's every man for himself because Patty, instead of going for Tate, goes for the other guys, kind of like mm -hmm. as a get even, you know, which they kind of talk about. Yeah. And he... I, I mean, he gets all three of them. Patty I mean, is really I'm, good uh, like that, okay? He Patty, caught him off guard. The guy who couldn't stand up for himself ever, all of a ever, sudden, yeah, is an takes expert down with three the guys. <laughs> takes a, at least it wasn't like a Walker, Texas Ranger thing where they're physically fighting and only one of them comes up yeah. at a time. It's more believable that it was bullets, right? But the other, oh, yeah, like the two definitely. big, the other two big guys that are like holding Tate, it's like, why do you have to hold someone to shoot him? I think you stand pretty still if there's like a gun pointing at couldn't you. you. Couldn't they have just thrown him overboard handcuffed? That's what I thought was going to happen. He would have had enough trouble treading water for ever but we did see in sure. was it, was it earlier this episode or last episode he like is a whiz out of cuffs oh no but tate did or tate helped him yeah Bo or Bo helped, helped him. him guys <laughs> i don't know why i did it's not all even Bo. like it's all it's Bo. mind Bo. blown <laughs> if, so, if something if something this is the greatest thing about this show if something I feel so weird stupid right now <laughs> i was like no but you guys he's clearly been in cuffs, cuffs <laughs> if, a ton Bo of time. Is that good if something weird ever happens in any episode of this show it's Bo. yeah Pretty so. much. But I didn't think it was weird. I just thought he'd like been cuffed so many times he knew his way out. Like, don't I mean, that criminals could be know too. how to get out of I mean, cuffs. that could have happened. He has been cuffed a lot. That's true. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Thanks for making me feel better. <laughs> well, uh, talk to me about winter, guys, because we've been talking about this for a while. Winter's driving me crazy. Why? Because the very first episode, he comes in as the fake priest, and it was that creepy first scene mm -hmm. in, in death row, in the prison yeah. cell. And I saw that first scene, and I said, oh, this is going to be good. Mm -hmm. I just know it. And you watch him, and the way he commands that scene, and the way he commands that entire thing, pretty much, and this is what's going on. We're going to get you out. I have this plan. The lights go out. The guards get punched. Mm -hmm. You know, Tate is ex flawlessly brought out of prison. Executed out. And then every single episode since then, 
Winter screws up a little more, and he loses Tate, and he loses Bo, and he tries to make that truce with Skurrus, and it doesn't work, and then he loses Tate again, and he loses Bo again, and he doesn't have a plan, and we've been in six episodes, and there have been seven or eight safe houses, and they're constantly moving. Am I the only one on this panel who thinks Winter does not know what the heck he is doing? I don't think he knows what he's doing anymore. I think he had a plan, and it's just not working, and that's why he brought Tate in. But but and I mean he, he has to transfer the responsibility over. But that's the thing. There is no responsibility to transfer because he doesn't have any. Like, he has true. no idea what's going on. He is no better off than Tate. <laughs> he may be a little better off because he knows everything yeah. Bo is capable of and right. score us and that stuff. But he's really no better off because every episode it's like these little screw ups. Well, and they keep losing members of the team. I yeah. mean not like this episode, See, but in the previous episodes they've lost like I mean, it's down to it was two of them ten, now? It was ten, and then it went to six, and the one guy walked. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's like, it's just them and, now, so yeah, I, don't, we I don't really know where it's going to go. Are they just going to keep running? Like, what's the end game kind of thing? This, uh, Bo needs to be enrolled in elementary school immediately. <laughs> She's just been running. Who's <laughs> teaching her how to read and write, guys? <laughs> she does seem pretty smart, but no, I mean, that's the thing. I mean, it, it looks like Winter doesn't have an out, and we're just going to go to the next safe house, and we're going to go to the next, and it's like, well, the FBI is on us, and so-and-so's on us. It's like, well, yeah, of course they are you should have expected that from the get-go right well i mean and I, I i think that they did i mean i'm not saying winter like you know this is this like mistakes and and is like a play dumb thing because he's like it's part of a bigger picture to be strong but i definitely think there isn't anyone better than him to run the team you know i mean that he's he's the best they he's got the he knows yeah. he knows the inside of orchestra he knows bo's entire backstory he knows her her mother, he knows her father. Mm -hmm. I mean, as well as you could know mm -hmm. somebody that's been in jail for <laughs> seven years. <laughs> um, I mean, but he's been watching him. I mean, and and I think that he has faith. He had faith in the 10 people that are now down to two. Mm -hmm. And I think that was a huge thing because each of those people on the team had a very specific skill set, right. different and complementary to one another. And so, you know, they're trying to, what was it, jam the computers for the Amber Alert. Yeah. And they can't. Yeah. Well, yeah, and then they were saying, well, you know, we'll take care of that murder, like, the headlines. Like, yeah. however you take care of that. But, like, maybe that person's not there anymore. Right. But I think in the future, maybe he reaches out. You know, the team is getting smaller and smaller to Zoe. Is that certain? He name? does, yeah. Yeah. We yeah. See so that. I think mo more and more people will probably come in and out of the situation and kind of lend a hand. Well, and I think that now that they're in the thick of it, like you're saying, safe house to safe house, it's one of those where it's like, I don't think that you could prepare for it. Like, there's no amount of training yeah. or hypotheticals that you could map out that would really prepare you for what they're going through, mm -hmm. especially in losing people because, you know, now they know everybody who's after her and the lengths that, that orchestra is going to go to to get her back. And, I mean, they're not, they're not letting up. Right. Yeah. I need them to go to the FBI and show them what orchestra really is. That's what the play needs to be. Because they need to use the FBI to kind of go over into their on their team rather than Roman's team. I think that's an interesting idea because the very last scene of this episode when Skouris is meeting with all the Defense Department officials mm -hmm. and the CIA and stuff, did you catch all that tension between them? You know, Absolutely. Yeah. I, I, maybe, I did. Uh, maybe, look, maybe Skouris is going to go rogue. Like, he hasn't gone rogue enough anyways. But maybe he <laughs> but tries to go rogue. Go, definitely. Really rogue. And the CIA says, okay, we shut this down or whatever it is. And the tension rift between Skouris and the government gives an opening to Winter's Winter. Winter is going in and being like, this is why we've been running. Now you get it. Yeah. Please help us now. See, the thing that I think is interesting, because in those meetings, I definitely felt the tension. But I also feel like part of that comes from... They're so in line with what Roman wants that they're frustrated that he hasn't delivered. Yeah. You know, I mean, because Bo's gone and that was the star of the show. And now he's forcing, he's so desperate to deliver to them because he wants to show them what he's capable of. And that's sort of where, for me, I was just like, wh wh who's bossing Roman around that's making him be so I think desperate he's just to, crazy. to make this happen? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Why, as a scientist, with all the research and everything that you have, mm -hmm. why can't you just say, look, guys, like, these are human beings, and they evolve, and they're adapting, and, and we've never done anything like this before, and there's no guarantee that this this whole program is an exper experiment. There's no guarantee that it's going to work. Like, mm -hmm. why why is he so desperate to just push Joshua and mm -hmm. now well, Sean? Remember, Sean, yeah. in what was it, the second or third episode, they did the backstory on... 
the first yep. time Winter learned about this from Roman oh, up in yeah. Roman's office in the high rise. Mm -hmm. And remember what Roman said, this isn't about money, I have money. Yeah. So this, this is a power play, this is Absolutely. an influence play. And I think those motives are scarier than money. If you're trying to make money off this, you do whatever to, like a business person. Yeah. This is about influence and power and whatever that end He doesn't end care means. who exactly. he's hurting in the, in the, the way he goes to, you know, he thinks he is like saving the world. He's creating these weapons that are going to protect people. He doesn't see all the damage he's doing to get there. Look, if, if you have a person with telekinesis who can, or with any of these powers, whatever the whole totality of the powers mm -hmm. is, if you have a person who they can shoot a missile from a drone at, the, at all these government officials and that person can blow up the missile, yeah. that person or these people could theoretically do almost anything to take over the world. So if mm -hmm. you're Roman, why isn't that on your power play? You know, why don't you say, hey, talk about influence and power. Mm -hmm. Forget this government. I could take over every government down hey. the road. Well, and that's what's happen. so interesting. He doesn't really seem, I definitely agree with the power, but he doesn't seem, he doesn't seem desperate to just, like, go on his own. He's desperate to prove to these government, you know, the, mm -hmm. I can't, the military leaders, you know, mm -hmm. who, who oversee weapons. Mm -hmm. And please them it's not about i mean unless this is an arc that is with his character going to evolve and we're going to see that in fact it has nothing to do with pleasing them and he is going to try to like do his own thing and kind of go even more rogue right. than we've already seen i think it's a really long sell i think if you can defeat the united states military you can defeat pretty much pretty any much military anyone. in the world so if if you're roman right now and you're a, and we know he's a bad dude he's so <laughs> creepy excuse me yeah I, I think he goes after and says you know what if i can get this government i can get the next government and and whatever that power looks like on the next yeah. level maybe it comes i don't know because we got Bo on our side <laughs> that's right <laughs> that's right i just want to touch on one last thing about her that i loved in this episode was the connection again i i loved as i already said her with her grandpa yeah and then you know they're sitting at the house waiting and she's drawing before they find out tate is mm -hmm. on the boat and they need to go help him and he says that tate used to draw with his mom and mm -hmm. that his mom was an artist and it's just kind of one of those like full circle things where it's like does she get that a little bit from that side of the family or you know like is it just from her mom's side you know and it's just kind of fun to see the merging and intertwining of these you know, these two people that were in absolute love that, mm -hmm. that made Bo and, and getting to kind of see those different pieces of her past too a little bit because yeah. Tate is her past. Yeah, you know? no, it's, it was cute to see some background. And, and I think that this is where the show really develops a personality. The first episode to me was great because it was yeah. spooky and weird and new. Yeah, and catches, then yeah. two, three, four, five, I was like, okay, this is good, but Bo helps was, somebody new every yeah. episode. It it's kind of like repetitive. A chase. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's always a chase, and then there's a new person. There's the blogger. There's all these people. Right. And then now that we know the relationship between Bo and Tate, I think we develop that and see the actual Tate and the actual Bo, and you learn more of a touching backstory than just the logistical. Here was the crime. Yeah. Here was the prison sentence. That backstory. Right. Right. Well, and, and now it'll be really interesting to see moving forward because Winter does go tell Tate that... My favorite part. You tell it then. <laughs> oh, my God. So he comes in. He survived the crazy boat situation. Which and, we have to talk about in a minute, but oh, go ahead. No, let's, get <laughs> to, first. let's yeah, do this yeah. first. Okay. What's your problem with my, the boat My scene? problem with the boat, correct me if I am wrong, there were, what, four or five guys on that boat? That thing was blown to pieces. <laughs> And, and Tate, I'm sorry, he walks away without a scratch, or he has, like, you know, a little scratch here and there, and he comes back, and he's, whatever, you know, what's up, guys? i just gotten a huge explosion on a boat, but I'm good. Had to swim a half mile back inland, but I'm cool. It's I, I, He's, like, uh, very dry, too. Don't you think he'd still be, like, damp from swimming? Oh, he'd be soaking wet. I don't, that's what I don't get. I just, I don't understand how there wasn't, like, a more severe injury, or <laughs> even even if he had jumped off the boat before the explosion. That's what I figured. But there's still, there's still shards of everything. Like, this is a boat, I and know. it exploded. Maybe mm. I'm maybe I'm doing too much. I just think that I think that him and Patty jumped off the boat and they shot the gasoline tank or whoever shot the gasoline tank. So do, as they were jumping. So do you think that Tate is the only one alive, or did somebody else make it off the boat? He said Patty made Patty it. Patty made it. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. He okay. said that. I mean, yeah. we don't know if anybody else did because they don't say it. We're gonna no assume that did. they did because they were just, all that's, shot. That's too poetic to me because Patty 
is a bad guy, but we learn he's not as bad as the other bad guys. Yeah. So the other three bad guys die, but oh, the two kind but of good guys But he might be the it. worst bad guy because he's just turning on every... There is no loyalty he, anywhere. I mean, it really... Or he was scared. He was just well, really scared of what the consequences would be if he didn't do what he was told. I mean, I think in truly his loyalty, we do see goes with goes Tate. Goes back to yeah. Tate. Which is why it was written the way yeah. that it was written. And as far as the whole boat scene and just get over that, it, okay? Just let it go. That's I where can't. you just say, "This is TV. We can do what we want." Yeah, no, that is true. I mean, I just I, it I looked don't know. cool, all right. It it did look kind of cool. Really big explosion. It was a huge explosion. <laughs> as I as I've worked on some like acting projects, that's kind of like what it comes down to in some scenes. You're like, it doesn't have to make sense to the story as long as it looks it's cool. It's totally fine. I mean, and, and Tate had to had to live. Yeah. So I, I guess I guess we let the audience do the talking. If I'm the only one who thinks this, then I'm definitely wrong, right? I mean, no. I, my problem is that he's not soaking wet. That's my problem with. This and, scene. and I feel like two or three cuts later in the scene, his face is all wet, but it wasn't wet to start. So I don't know if that's supposed to be tears. I thought it was supposed to be tears. I thought it was too, but now that I realize he came from the boat and oh, from the lake, oh, he was still like a little. He could have been a little. He got dry and then he got wet. I don't know. We're reading way too much. I think we're reading far too much into that. <laughs> but what's the most important part of this episode? He comes back, and Tate's like, "Let's get out of here." Like, you know, we I know Job the truth. Done. You know, I you know he didn't like we established he didn't want revenge. He just wanted the truth, even though he kind of got revenge because, whatever. Jack's no longer with us. <laughs> but um, Darn. Bo goes. We you know Milton. You have to tell him your story, and I. I was hoping that it was going to be that you're her father, but I still didn't really, you know, I didn't think it was going to be. I was like, what story does Milton have? I don't know. And he brings him over to the corner and tells him that he is her father. And I teared up. Do you love the shot of Bo that they had where she's like sitting there and she's like smiling and looking up? Like, so the, the question they, like, is, do you over. think she knows? Does she know that? 100%. I think so okay. too. 100%. That's, that's her way of looking. And I think... Not only does she know, but you know she knows when Winter says to Tate, it's your privilege. Meaning, like, so, go talk to yeah. her. You have your moment. All right. Yeah. Well, I can't wait for that moment. And I do think that it was sort of his way of saying, when you're ready, she's ready. Mm -hmm. So, you know, take your time. And we do see him kind of starting to man up a little bit. Yeah. And, you know, that last shot where he puts his hand on her shoulder. He apologizes. And he real. I think at that point, he goes from that brother-sister relationship to father daughter because he's taking responsibility he's apologizing that she saw him in a you know when he was pointing a gun at patty's head like that should never be seen you know you're you should never have to see your father like that um so i think he's gonna start you know being that role and it's gonna be fun to watch and that was a great three seconds of tv when she's smiling that yeah. shot of her oh my god that was per and i think that grin is kind of her saying like hey dad what's up Kind I knew it of, all. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I've just been messing with you. What's up? Yeah, the confirmation. You know? Like, yeah, 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 this is real. You know, I and, loved and that, it. that connection that you felt, and I love how Winter's like calling him out from the beginning before he's, he's just like, you don't know, laying it out there. You like, don't come feel on, it? man. You felt it from the minute you saw her, kind of a thing. Yeah. He did. He knew deep right. down. <laughs> come on, you guys, go on iTunes and subscribe and give us five stars if you like what you see. Please give us comments. Let us know what you think of the show. Let us know what you think of us. And, and if you have any opinions that you want to share with us, please let us know. We love to know what we can do to keep the show great and to make it even better. Uh, before we sign off, let's do predictions. And now, you're after Buzz TV predictions. Who wants to start? I will start Go with ahead. one. It's not a huge thematric or uh, theatrical thematic prediction, but it is something I've noticed. The butterflies. Yep. Um, several episodes, the first couple episodes, every time something was about to happen, every time uh, Bo was going to help somebody, you mm -hmm. see butterflies. You haven't seen them for a few episodes. So I don't know the significance of that, but I got to believe that they would come back. I also wonder, and we should have looked this up in the right. two minutes before watch after watching this and before the show, what does the dragon mean? When she was drawing the dragon, what is the meaning behind a dragon? Well, I don't know, because she saw the dragon on the side of the building when they went into Hudson. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I don't, I don't know if it means something more or it was just like danger. I don't know. Because, I mean, the butterfly is obviously like, you know, resurrection and new mm -hmm. birth and that sort of stuff. So I wonder what the symbolism of the dragon is mm -hmm. and if we see that. That again? Return it all. Again. Yeah, no, that'll be interesting to see. Mm -hmm. I, I'm i kind of going to go back on what you were saying right before. 
where I think that we definitely see Tate now step up. Mm -hmm. I think he fully commits to this operation because he did get the closure that he wants. And we really start to see the father-daughter relationship. Right. And I think that we're going to see a little Mr. Bossy. Mm, he's going to be a, like a go from like not protective to like overly protective. Totally. Well, in the preview, we see that she gets shot. And that's not good. And he probably <laughs> overreacts. And uh, I, I'm not happy that they're shooting a 10-year-old. But, mm -hmm. you know, we'll see what happens. What, I'm sure what, she's going to be fine. What is the Tate body count while we're at it? Because it's three from this episode. Like, who has he actually killed? Because he didn't oh. kill the two people before the show. It's three from this episode. Has he killed anybody else? I know he beat up the guys in White Noise last episode. I don't know if he's actually think killed him, anyone. No. So are these the first three? This this is the real first Did blood. He really no, I'm going to say Patty though? shot the guy. Exactly. Oh, okay, we're keeping tape. Okay, I see. Um, I think we're still at zero. <laughs> okay, all we'll right. We'll see, though. We'll keep track. Girls against boy. <laughs> I will say one, one actual prediction I'll make. We talked about it on the show already, but... Uh, Skouris has something deeper that he yeah, wants to get yeah. out of this. It's yeah. not just the CIA. It's not just the American military. Because think about it. If, if you were developing this for the military, at some point, you would have developed it far enough, and the military would take it from you and say, thanks, buddy. We got it now. We're mm -hmm. going to use this because we're the military. And if Skouris, if it's not about money, if it's about power and influence... He doesn't want it taken from him. Well, and he has the money to keep That's it. That's the thing. Exactly. I found it very interesting. One last point when they were in that meeting, he was like, you haven't spent a cent of taxpayers' dollars. So he had, he's like, even though he has, I don't know if he has to go to these like meetings with the generals, but he has the power because it's his program. It's his money. And uh, we're going to see, like we said, that power keep getting bigger and bigger. Which reminds me the mole, Zoe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, we see that Winter calls her. She needs, he needs her help. So what's that all about? Is she going to be exposed? We'll I think see. she will be sooner than later. <laughs> oh, Thank Zoe. you guys so much for joining us. Please let us know what you think. You can find all of us on Twitter, probably. I am at C-O-U-H-E-N on Twitter and Instagram. I am at Bobby DeMuro on Twitter. We were tweeting earlier about this show, so if you guys are on Twitter, get on Twitter, tweet us, challenge us, question us. We want to hear from you. Yeah, you can find me on Twitter as well at Kidakuano. We will see you next week. Bye, guys. From executive producers Maria Manunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later. <laughs>